Welcome to your deep dive uh, into the world of mirror microbes. Mirror microbes. Yeah. It's a, it's a pretty new area of research. It is. And it's based on this fascinating AI-informed review by Dr. Lev Namoten. Well, wow. Also called mirror microbes. Okay. It explores these microbes, the current research, and the potential impact, both positive and honestly a little frightening. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. You know, what's so interesting about this is the sheer scope. Mm -hmm. We're not just talking about microbes copying simple structures. Right. They could mirror anything from individual human cells to entire ecosystems. Wow. Yeah. So first things first, what exactly are mirror microbes? Right. It almost sounds like science fiction. It does. Right. Um, well, Dr. Nemoten points out that mirror microbes isn't a formal term yet. Okay. More of a way to describe a range of research. Just more about the concept of microbes being mimics. Exactly. Yeah, Think yeah. about it like this. Okay. Symbiotic mimicry, where microbes evolve to resemble host cells to evade the immune system. Right. Or synthetic biology, mm. where we're designing microbes to replicate functions of human cells. So... Okay, that's starting to make more sense. Yeah, so yeah. some of this mimicking is happening naturally, and some of it we're engineering in a lab. Right. Okay. You can see this natural mimicry at work mm -hmm. with Helicobacter pylori. Yeah. You probably know it as the bacteria that causes stomach ulcers. Ah, so that's how it does it. Exactly. Wow. Does the review give any specifics about the mimicry? It does. Oh, cool. Each pylori actually produces a protein. Okay. That's structurally similar to a protein found in our stomach lining. Oh, wow. Well, That's how it blends in. Thank you. And avoids detection by the immune system. Wow. Pretty clever, huh? Yeah. yeah. So that's a natural example. But what about the engineered mirror microbes? Right. That's where things get really mind-blowing, right? Yeah. What are the possibilities there? The possibilities are vast. Yeah. Imagine microbes designed to produce biofuels. Okay. To tackle our energy needs. Right. Or think about microbes engineered to break down those forever chemicals yeah. that are polluting the environment. Mm-hmm. Dr. Namoten even talks about microbes that could mimic insulin production. Okay. A game changer for treating diabetes. That would be amazing. Yeah. Okay. I can see why people are getting so excited about this field. Mm. But you mentioned both positive and frightening impacts. Right. Is there a downside to this kind of mimicry? That's where the mirror analogy gets a bit darker. Uh. As with any powerful technology. Yeah. Mirror microbes come with risks. Yeah. The potential benefits are huge, mm -hmm. but so are the potential dangers. Okay. This is where it gets really interesting and yeah. maybe a little scary. It is. What kind of risks are we talking about here? The big concern is the possibility of a mirror microbe pandemic. Oh. Imagine a microbe that's learned to mimic human cells so effectively right. that it can spread undetected and cause widespread disease. That does sound terrifying. It is. So what makes mirror microbes so potentially dangerous? Um, there are a few things. Okay. First, their ability to evade our immune systems so makes them incredibly stealthy. Oh, gosh. Second, they might be resistant to our conventional treatments, oh, like, okay. like antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Then there's the potential for what Dr. Nate Moten calls hyper-adaptation. Okay. Because they're so good at mimicking. Right. They could potentially jump between species much more easily. Oh, wow. Than typical microbes. So between animals and humans. Exactly. Wow. Making containment a nightmare. That's scary. Yeah. It almost sounds like a sci-fi movie where a virus mutates and starts infecting different species. Right. But we're talking about real life microbes here, which is a bit unsettling. It is. And there's one more thing that makes them so dangerous. There is. Okay. Tell me. The potential for unintended evolution. Oh. We're dealing with the fundamental building blocks of life yeah. by manipulating them. Yeah. We could create microbes yeah. that evolve in ways we can't predict or oh. control Okay, with consequences we can't even imagine. So it's not just about a microbe causing a disease. No. It's about a microbe changing and adapting in ways that we never intended and can't stop. Exactly. Oh, God. That's what makes this research so exciting right. and so terrifying at the same time. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Welcome back to your deep dive into the world of mirror microbes. Mirror microbes. In the last part. Right. We talked about what these microscopic mimics are. Yeah. Some natural and engineered examples. Mm -hmm. And started exploring some of the scary possibilities, like a potential pandemic. Oh, right. It's definitely a lot to take in. It is a lot. Yeah. And, you know, before we get too overwhelmed by the 
potential for disaster. Okay. Let's take a closer look at what these scenarios might actually look like. Okay, so let's start with the big one, a global pandemic. Right. What would that entail with a mirror microbe? Well, imagine this. A mirror microbe that's evolved to perfectly mimic the beneficial bacteria in your gut. In my gut. So like the microbiome. Yes, your gut microbiome. It spreads easily, Mm. goes undetected by your immune system, and starts to outcompete those good microbes. So it's not just causing an infection. No. It's replacing the good bacteria that are essential for my health. Exactly. Oh, gosh. And the scariest part. Yeah. Because it mimics those beneficial bacteria so effectively. Mm -hmm. The usual warning signs of infection might not show up. Right. You wouldn't necessarily experience fever inflammation or the other classic symptoms that alert you to a problem. You wouldn't know. So I could be harboring this dangerous microbe without even knowing it. Right. Until it's too late. That's the nightmare scenario. Oh, wow. It could spread silently through the population. Oh, oh. Causing systemic infections, organ failure, and and eventually... A pandemic unlike anything we've ever seen. Hmm. That's scary. It's truly frightening to think about. And it's not just humans at risk, is it? No, it's not. Dr. Nemoten also mentions the potential for global food insecurity. He does. How would mere microbes affect our food supply? Well, think about the role microbes play in agriculture. Okay. They're essential for plant growth. Okay. Nutrient cycling. Yeah. All the things that keep our food systems running. Right. So if there was a mirror microbe that targeted those essential microbes, Mm -hmm. it could have a devastating impact on crop yields, right? That's right. Oh, no. Imagine a mirror microbe that mimics the bacteria. Okay. Responsible for nitrogen fixation in soil. Okay. If it disrupted that process. Yeah. Plant growth would be severely hampered. Wow. Leading to massive crop failures. Oh, God. And widespread famine. That's a chilling thought, and we've only covered two of the potential disasters outlined in the review. Right. Dr. Nemoten also mentions biosphere collapse mm-hmm. as a possibility. Is that really something we need to be worried about? Well, it's definitely the most extreme scenario. Right. But it highlights just how interconnected life on Earth really is. Okay. Imagine a mere microbe that targets keystone species. Keystone species. Okay. I'm following you, keystone species. They're like the foundation of the ecosystem. Exactly. So what would happen if a mere microbe targeted them? Think about pollinators, like bees, for example. Okay, right. They're essential for plant reproduction. Yeah. So if their populations were decimated by a mere microbe, Mm. it would have a ripple effect throughout the entire ecosystem. So like if bees were to disappear, entire ecosystems would start to collapse. Plant diversity would plummet. Oh, God. Food webs would collapse. Yeah. And whole ecosystems could start to unravel. Or what about plankton? Plankton, yeah. They're the base of the marine food web. Right. So if a mirror microbe targeted them, Mm -hmm. it could disrupt the entire ocean ecosystem. Exactly. It's a domino effect. Right. One keystone species falls, and the whole system could come crashing down. That's a scary thought. That's why Dr. Namoten calls this an existential threat. It is an existential threat. It's not just about human survival. It's about the potential for a cascading collapse of life on Earth as we know it. Yeah, it's life as we know it. Okay, well, I think we've officially reached peak anxiety levels for today. I think so, too. But before we all spiral into a full-blown existential crisis, let's shift gears and talk about solutions. Right. Does Dr. Namoten offer any hope for preventing these scenarios? Thankfully, he does. Okay, that's good to hear. So where do we start? How do we prevent a mirror microbe pandemic? Well, one of the most important things is containment and regulation. Okay. Especially when it comes to synthetic biology. Right. We need strict protocols to prevent accidental releases of engineered mirror microbes from labs or industrial facilities. Right. We can't afford to have a situation like the fictional movies where... A virus escapes from a lab and wreaks havoc. Yeah, those movies. Right. Absolutely. And along with containment, we need early detection. Okay. Dr. Nee Moten emphasizes the development of advanced detection systems. Like what? Specifically, AI-driven biosensors that can pick up the subtle signs of mirror microbes. Okay. Before they become a full-blown problem. Okay, so AI biosensors, how would those actually work? What would they be detecting? Well, they would be designed to analyze biological samples okay. for the telltale signs of mirror microbes. Okay. Remember how we talked about H. pylori mimicking a specific protein in our stomach lining? Right. These biosensors could identify those kinds of molecular mimicry signatures. Okay. 
even if they're present at very low levels. That sounds promising, but isn't there a risk that these AI biosensors could be fooled by evolving mere microbes? What if they mutate so much that we no longer recognize them? That's a valid concern. Yeah. And it highlights the need for ongoing research and development. Right. We need to stay ahead of the curve. Right. Constantly updating our detection systems mm. to mm. keep pace with the evolving threat of mirror microbes. So it's a constant arms race yeah. between our technology and the evolving capabilities of these microbes. In a way, yes. But along with containment and detection, okay. we also need to be thinking about treatments. Right. Our current antibiotics and antivirals might not be effective against mirror microbes. That's right. What are our options there? Dr. Nemotin suggests exploring a whole new approach to medicine. Okay. Potentially using synthetic biology to create counter microbes. Counter microbes. Yeah. Think of them as anti-mirrors. Anti-mirrors. Specifically engineered to neutralize the threat posed by harmful mirror microbes. Interesting. It's like fighting fire with fire. Exactly. But on a microscopic level, are there any specific examples of how these anti-mirrors might work? Well, one possibility would be to engineer a counter microbe. Okay. That produces an enzyme that specifically degrades the unique proteins or molecules that a harmful mirror microbe uses for mimicry. Okay, so break down. Break it down, yeah. The bad microbe. Yeah. Or we could engineer counter microbes that outcompete the harmful ones mm. for resources, essentially starving them out of the ecosystem. So just starve them. Starve them out, yeah. Okay, it's fascinating to think about the possibilities, but it sounds like we're still in the early stages of developing these kinds of treatments. We are. Yeah. But the potential is there. Right. And it highlights the need for more research and investment in this area. So we've got containment detection and treatment. Is there anything else we can do to prepare for the potential threat of mere microbes? Dr. Namoten emphasizes the importance of global surveillance okay. and collaboration. Right. We need a worldwide network to monitor microbial populations, share information quickly, yeah. and coordinate a rapid response to any potential outbreaks. Right. It's not something any one country can handle on its own. Exactly. Yeah. We need a global effort to address this global threat. So it sounds like we have a lot of work to do to prevent these potential disasters. We do. But before we dive into those efforts, there's a bigger question we need to address. Should we even be pursuing this research in the first place, given the potential consequences? Is it ethically responsible to continue down this path? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? And it's one we'll explore further in the final part of our deep dive. Welcome back to the final part of our deep dive into mirror microbes. So far, we've explored what these microbes are, their potential, and some pretty scary disaster scenarios. But as you know, this deep dive is based on Dr. Lev Namoten's review. And he doesn't just leave us with a sense of impending doom. No, he doesn't. Okay, good. Because honestly, after the last part, I'm ready for some good news. Yeah. But before we get into specific solutions, let's tackle that big looming question. Should we even be messing with these microbes knowing how dangerous they could be? Right. That's the ethical dilemma at the heart of it all, isn't it? It really is. We've got this incredibly powerful technology with the potential to revolutionize medicine, clean up the environment, and deepen our understanding of life itself. But it comes with risks that could literally threaten our existence. So how do we even begin to navigate that? How do we balance the potential benefits with the potential for global catastrophe? Well, Dr. Nemotin outlines a f the few key principles that I think are a great starting point. The first is transparency. Okay. We need open, honest communication about the research being done, the risks involved, and the potential benefits. So no more secret labs and clandestine experiments. No more secret labs. We need to bring this conversation out into the open. Exactly. This isn't something scientists can decide on their own. Yeah. We need a public dialogue informed consent from society, and clear regulations that everyone understands. That makes a lot of sense. What else does Dr. Namoten suggest? He also stresses the importance of international collaboration. Okay. This isn't a problem any single nation can solve. Right. We need a global effort to regulate research, share information, and coordinate a rapid response to any potential threat. That reminds me of what we learned from the recent pandemic. Global problems require global solutions. We can't afford to have countries working in isolation, especially when we're dealing with something as potentially dangerous as mere microbes. Right. And finally, yeah. Dr. Nemoten emphasizes the need for humility. Okay. We need to acknowledge that we don't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. We don't fully understand the complexities of life, and our attempts to manipulate it could have unintended consequences that we can't predict or control. 
It's about respecting the power of nature and understanding that we're not always in charge. We might be able to engineer these microbes, but we can't necessarily predict or control their evolution. Right. And that leads us to some really profound philosophical questions, doesn't it? Yeah. Like what? If mere microbes can mimic complex systems so well, yeah. what does that tell us about the nature of life itself? That's what I find so fascinating about this whole topic. It's not just about the science. It's about what it means to be alive, what it means to be human. If a microbe can mimic a human cell so perfectly, where does the self begin and end? Right. Are we more interconnected than we realize? And if these microbes can evolve so rapidly and adapt to new environments so effectively, what does that say about the potential for life to exist beyond Earth? Could mirror microbes be the key to understanding how life might arise and evolve on other planets? Now, those are some truly mind-blowing questions. Yeah. And it shows how this research, while potentially dangerous, could also lead us to some incredible discoveries, not just about the world around us, but about our place in the universe. So it's like this double-edged sword. A double-edged sword, yes. Yeah. We're on the verge of unlocking some profound secrets but we have to proceed with extreme caution awareness and a deep sense of responsibility. That's the challenge and the opportunity presented by mirror microbes. They're a mirror reflecting not just our scientific progress, but our ethical choices, our philosophical questions, and ultimately our humanity. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. We've explored yeah. the science, the potential benefits and risks, the possible solutions and the ethical considerations. And hopefully we've left you with a sense of wonder, a touch of healthy fear and a lot to think about. And that concludes our deep dive into mirror microbes. Thanks for joining us.